hello friends welcome to gyas how are you i hope you are doing well so friends as you know that on our channel we are covering the syllabus of upsc civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains so currently we have 10 series that focus on your prelims and one series that is mains oriented so what we do in these prelims oriented series we daily pick up two topics and in this manner we discuss 10 questions 10 mcqs of each topic and and in this manner total 20 mcqs are discussed each day so we will continue to do so till 31st may so why the date chosen has been 31st may because on 2nd june is your prelims of upsc csc 2019 and we will end this series only one day before your prelims exam so let's start our discussion friends the first question is which of the following conditions facilitate the growth of jute so here here uh, the question the topic picked up is of geography so lecture number 9 is uh, is currently we are on lecture number 9 already eight lect lectures have been covered so here we have been asked that which of the following uh, conditions are ideal for jute cultivation a well drained fertile soils in flood plains and high temperature at the time of growth b water retaining soils in hilly areas where mean annual temperature is generally low than plains c sandy soils in arid and semi arid regions d laterite soils in western coastal regions of india Uh, with moderate temperature zones so we have to choose the correct answer so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is a that is well drained fertile soils in the flood plains and high temperature at the time of growth so friends uh, this uh, this jute uh, jute is a crop that requires well drained soils and also it requires high temperature at the time of growth so mainly it is grown in northeastern areas and eastern india for example in west bengal and in and in northeastern states Uh, so also a uh, considerable uh, area of uh, jute cultivation was also lost to east pakistan when india got partitioned so this also affected india's production capability of jute so a is the correct answer so there are very many states uh, that uh, grow jute that is for example west bengal bihar assam odisha and meghalaya are the major jute producing uh, states and they grow on well uh, fertile uh, soils with in flood plains where soils are renewed every year and uh, they uh, and they require high temperature this crop requires high temperature at the time of growth and also friends it is known as golden fiber so please note this point this is important so it is used in for multiple purposes for example making gunning bags mats ropes yarn carpets and other artifacts and friends also it it, it is cost and now due to the due to the uh, 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 development of alternatives for, for example synthetic products uh, particularly the nylon it has been uh, the jute has been losing market so it is a cause of concern for the jute producers as well as the uh, governments uh, that uh, um, because ultimately there will be loss on loss in uh, revenue as well as there will be loss in uh, employment if if jute cultivation reduced second is ground water remains under exploited in which of the following regions in india so friends here we have been asked that which of the following regions uh, uh, um, have uh, have uh, under exploited ground water a agriculturally prosperous regions of punjab and western up b hard rock plateau areas of central and southern india c all coastal areas so let me tell you friends that uh, this uh, this is c and d option is there is evidence of uh, heavy exploitation not under uh, uh, not under exploitation in some of the above mentioned areas so friends let me tell you that in all of these mentioned areas for example punjab and western up particularly uh, punjab and western up experienced green revolution in 1960s due to which uh, the irrigation facilities developed and also punjab state offers the free electricity uh, for for the for the ground for the bore wells that extract ground water so there is over exploitation particularly in these states and also friends uh, these hard, uh, hard rock plateau areas of central and southern india also they experience uh, high exploitation of groundwater and also coastal areas experience high exploitation so d is correct answer so there is evidence of heavy exploitation not under exploitation in all of these areas the solution is d so here are some stats so, so above 300 districts uh, are uh, uh, they have reported a 4 meter decline in their water level in 20 years in the past 20 years so you can see that 4 4 meter decline in nearly 300 districts uh, nearly half of the districts 
uh, uh, have experienced a decline in water, water ground, ground water level. So also one third of the country is over exploiting this resource and also if, if the current pattern continued then in coming decades 60% uh, of the country would be uh, withdrawing same uh, uh, um, that means uh, they will be over exploiting this uh, resource and also groundwater overuse is particularly uh, 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 found in prosperous regions in Punjab and Western UP and also hard rock plateaus of area in south, south, uh, areas of central and south India and some coastal areas and rapidly growing urban settlements and also friends groundwater is uh, overused there are multiple factors responsible for it for example in Punjab there is free free availability of electricity for the bore wells and also there are some non regulated uh, illegally re regulated uh, bore wells that that are not uh, authorized by the government because you have to take the uh, connection for the bore wells but there are uh, people have resorted to illegal bore wells and also friends uh, there is a growing of water intensive crops uh, in certain areas uh, that that are not suitable for 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 uh, for that crop for example rice is grown in punjab region but the rice is not suitable for punjab region so there is exploitation of water that takes place and also friends uh, the pollution of surface water reserves uh, due to agricultural runoffs or other reasons uh, due to industrial waste uh, it it renders surface water um, uh, unusable and then groundwater uh, people turn to groundwater and thus uh, over exploitation of groundwater takes place so let's move on to the third question third question is consider the following statements one Balagat mines in Madhya Pradesh are known for copper production second Khetri mines in Rajasthan are famous as a major aluminium producer so let me tell you friends that the second statement is clearly wrong uh, uh, Khetri mines in Rajasthan they are famous for copper and not for not for aluminium so let me tell you friends that the only first statement is correct because yes Balagat mines are an important uh, uh, source of copper production and in fact the major uh, the major production of copper takes place in this Balagat mines and also there are there are Singh there is Singham plateau in Jharkhand where also the coal is uh, sorry copper is found so here the answer is one only so the answer would be a that is one only solution is a so Balagat mines in Madhya Pradesh they account for 52 percent of India's copper production and also there is Singham plateau in Jharkhand it is also leading producer of copper but K3 mines in Rajasthan are famous for co uh, copper and not for aluminium so let's move on to the fourth question fourth question is petroleum occurrences in India are generally associated with so here we have been asked that petroleum in India is generally associated with first anticlines and fault traps in the rock formations of tertiary age second porous limestone or sandstone layers within the crust so let me tell you friends uh, that uh, uh, that petroleum petroleum yes it is it is also found in anticline and fault traps in rock formations of tertiary age as well as in porous limestone or sandstone layers within the crust so it is kind of trapped between porous and non porous uh, layers so limestone and sandstone layers are porous so the the, the petroleum uh, kind of flows through them but uh, it is it is neither it, it neither moves downward nor, nor it comes outward uh, due to the uh, due to the kind of uh, uh, to sand uh, due to because these limestone and sandstone layers are sandwiched by by non porous layers so answer would be one both one and two so solution is C so here is the explanation so it is found and oil, oil bearing layer is porous limestone or sandstone through which oil may flow and also uh, there is also gas that that is usually uh, found with the oil so approximately 63 percent of the India's petro uh, petroleum crude oil petroleum production takes place uh, in, in uh, is, is from Mumbai high and then comes your your your, your Gujarat and then comes your Assam so this is the kind of uh, arrangement so it, you might be asked in the exam that which of the following regions are the largest producing uh, 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 largest petro petroleum producing regions so high mumbai high is the largest produ uh, petroleum producer so uh, it accounts for 63% of india's uh, india's coal uh, sorry petroleum production so this is about your fourth question so let's move on to the fifth question fifth question is heavy industries and thermal power station are located on or near the coal fields because one coal is a weight losing raw material second tertiary coal deposits in india occur only near the river beds let me tell you friends that uh, yes coal is a weight losing raw material because when when you transport it 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 is a kind of bulky material and and it it, it reduces into ash 
so it becomes uh, uh, useless or kind of very it, it becomes a very poor quality if transported over long distances so that's why thermal power stations and heavy industries are located near the coal fields but let me tell you friends the second statement is wrong yes in fact the tertiary coal deposit is found there in india it is basically found in uh, in 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 northeast but uh, and uh, but the but the but it is not only near the river beds so friends it is not uh, uh, just confined to river beds it is also found elsewhere so second statement would be wrong so here the answer would be a that is one only so coal is a weight losing raw material so that's why industries are closely located heavy industries closely located as well as thermal power plants are closely located the solution is a so coal is a bulky material which loses weight on use as it is reduced to ash so there there are there, there are different coal fields that 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 uh, saves the cost of uh, transferring uh, the coal to long distances and also friends let me tell you that coal in india is found in gondwana deposits in eastern india and and your uh, this tertiary deposits in northeastern india that's tertiary belts in northeastern india so sixth question is south korea lies between so it is a very easy question you might know about this a yellow sea and sea of japan b sea of japan and pacific ocean c korean strait and bungo bungo strait uh, sorry channel uh, d south china sea and pacific ocean so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is a that is yellow sea and sea of japan so here is the uh, explanation so you can see the key, see here uh, that uh, in map let me explain to you you can see here the north korea so you can also see here the south korea and uh, this is north korea and this uh, capital is pyongyang and uh, this is your south korea and south korea is now uh, surrounded by yellow sea and this this is your sea of japan and the here is japan country so you can see here so here it is here is tokyo so you can see this is seoul this is tokyo so this is about your figure so obviously it is uh, this south korea is between sea of japan and yellow sea so please remember these facts so here is east china sea. So let's move on to the seventh question. Seventh question is: Despite India being the largest producer of pulses in the world, India imports pulses to meet domestic demand. Demand. Why India can't produce enough to domestic de to meet domestic demand? First, pulses are one season crop and thus can be grown only in rabi season, which severely reduces availability in other seasons. Second, pulses require intensive irrigation facilities and heavy rainfall, which are not fulfilled due to shortage of monsoon rainfall and irrigation bottlenecks. So which of the above is correct? So we have to choose the correct uh, 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 statement. So let me tell you, friends, that the first is wrong. Let me tell you that pulses are not one season crop. They are grown during the rabi season as well as kharif season. So clearly first is wrong. And regarding second, second is also wrong because pulses require less water for their growth. So they can also survive in dry conditions. So clearly second is also wrong. So there are certain other reasons for which uh, India is importing pulses. pulses but there, certainly these two are, are not the reasons for 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 importing pulses so friends this the both both the statements are incorrect so the answer will be uh, none that is d solution would be d so shortage of pulses is uh, a major food security issue and it is a two season crop uh, in uh, grown in both kharif and uh, rabi season but let me tell you friends that they need less moisture and uh, sur and survive in dry conditions also so the main reason for the uh, uh, for the import of pulses is the high demand because india has high population and india is also to some uh, india is, uh, they, 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 in in uh, in in india the hinduism uh, hindu religion is uh, dominant so so basically it 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 is it 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 um, uh, it, it opposes it or kind of it it promotes vegetarianism to a great extent so for that matter also the pulses are consumed as a protein source and similarly there are there is a sometimes export takes place um, ignoring the domestic demand and also friends uh, there is also case that uh, productivity in india is not that much so that's why for example india's productivity is even one, uh, one third of us and canada so productivity of pulses is lower and also faulty a faulty msp policy uh, minimum support price in which uh, cereal crops are given a dominant position as well um, whereas pulses are are ignored so that's why people uh, farmers prefer to cultivate cereals like rice and wheat so this this pulses are not grown 
so also friends uh, there is uh, uh, productivity is lower as I have told you and also friends uh, they, in UP there is a particular concern regarding the pulses that is uh, the needle guy the the deer in these regions in this these uh, these central UP, UP region uh, in, in this central UP region can destroy the the huge pulse crow within hours so this is also a concern which is not tackled by the local government so this should be tackled so let's move on to the eighth question eighth question is arrange these places in east, in the east asia from north north to south so uh, there are certain places in east asia and you have to arrange them from north to south first pyongyang uh, second is seoul third is tokyo so we have to choose the correct answer using the codes below so let me tell you friends that pyongyang is the capital of north korea so certainly it is in the uh, it is in it is in north and then will come the seoul and then will come the tokyo if you have observed the previous map clearly so answer would be one two three that is a solution would be a so here is the uh, diagram so here you can see this is north korea and this is pyongyang and uh, here is you can see the seoul the capital of south korea and here is you can see the tokyo so obviously if you come from north to south you come in this manner so ultimately first of all come will pyongyang then seoul then tokyo so this is a series one two three so this is about your eighth question so let's move on to the ninth question ninth question is land degradation is a major problem in india which of the following factors is responsible for the degradation of land uh, largest land area so here we have been asked that which of the following is responsible for for the uh, degradation of largest land area a water erosion b salinity and alkal alkalinity uh, c wind erosion d forest degraded area so friends let me tell you that the correct answer is water erosion in fact it is water which is eroding the largest land area so a is the correct answer and rajasthan has the highest degraded land solution is a so here is uh, the uh, table which i have included so you can uh, see here that water erosion causes a kind of uh, this is in million hectare area so loss of toll uh, topsoil and it, it also results in gully formation and ravines and uh, so it is the largest contributor to 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 this uh, uh, we can say what water, uh, water, uh, it contributed to contribution uh, it is the largest contributor to land erosion and uh, land erosion so here you can see chemical degradation is also there so it also contributes to the uh, land erosion by by acidity so this is uh, your Mm. Question: So Rajasthan is the state with maximum degraded land, nearly one lakh square kilometer. So here are certain stats that you can see in the explanation part. So let's move on to the tenth, tenth question. Tenth question is: The Great Barrier Reef is the largest living thing on Earth and even visible from outer space. So it is located in. So here we have been asked that Great Barrier Reef. You might have heard about this, friends. Uh, uh, it is the, it is in the east in the eastern part of Australia. So it it nearly it covers 2300 kilometer of area a square kilometer of area. So it is kind of it is also visible from outer space. So here we have been asked that it is uh, it is located uh, in in it is located where. So most of you might say that near Timur Sea in southern Australia. But let me tell you, friends that as i have told you that great barrier reef is in eastern east northeastern australia so it is off the coast of queensland in northeastern australia so here here uh, you can see about the explanation so this is it covers uh, an over an area of 2300 km and also it is a world heritage site declared in 1981 so it is listed as also uh, one of the seven wonders of nature by the cnn so here is you can see so this is australia this is kimberley plateau uh, this is uh, kimberley plateau and this is the moose and this is gulf of carpentria so here is darwin uh, and here is uh, your great barrier reef so it 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 it, it is uh, it covers a quite large area so this is about your uh, last question so friends this is all about today's lecture if you like this uh, if you like the video please like it share it with your friends and also friends please ensure that you subscribe to our channel and also do not forget to press the bell icon so that you can get all the important notifications that we we do on our, our youtube channel for the future purposes so friends let me tell you that if anyone of you want to join us want to get these explanation videos then they then 
you people can contact us at this email id that is achieveias21 at the rate gmail.com or you can also contact us uh, on uh, on this number that is 89684264851 so friends uh, uh, this this uh, you can you can uh, you can contact us if you want the explanation pdfs of these mcqs so why friends these mcq pdfs are important because at the end of the day uh, you will not have the time to see 25 to 30 minute long video or for that matter you will not have the time to read standard books or ncrts because that they they are a, they are a kind of option and when you have uh, enough time to read so that's why at that at near the exam you will have to revise multiple topics uh, uh, and and also at that time you you must revise at least four to five times uh, before entering the exam hall so this can only happen if you do the revision in interesting manner and obviously reading a standard book again uh, for the third time uh, you can read also it in uh, if, uh, for the second time but reading it again for the third time or fourth time becomes totally boring so in that case you need some kind of uh, interesting things uh, interesting notes so that you 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 are your kind of curiosity remains at high level and you can revise your syllabus as well as you can uh, waste minimum time so these mcq pdfs are designed in a format so that you can revise your syllabus quickly without any wastage of time and so that you can revise them at least four to five times before you enter exam hall so if you wish to subscribe to these uh, pdfs then you can contact us at this email id that is achieveies21 at the gmail.com or this is our contact number that is 89684264851 so you can join us uh, in this initiative so this is all about friends today's video have a nice day thank you thank you very much